G'day guys, my name's Luke from Aquatic Rehab Spearfishing and welcome to our Q&A series. Now this is basically where guys can come on and ask us questions, uh, particularly around the How to Spearfish video series, which we've got available on Vimeo On Demand. So I've got a question here from Aiden Smith, um, who's just got in touch and he said, uh, hey mate, a bit of an amateur question for you. I've watched and thoroughly enjoyed the How to Spearfish video series, so big ups on that. Uh, cheers Aiden, that's cool. Um, you know, the more people that watch the series, um, you know, that really helps uh, to support us, so uh, cheers for that. Um, he says, the biggest struggle at the moment is working out fishy local spots that have good structure to work with. As someone who's never really been interested in fishing, uh, just starting out on the spearfishing front, the knowledge of good areas are limited. Have you got any advice on scoping out potential spots? At the moment, a buddy and I are going off what we think might be good. Uh, this is obviously pretty hit and miss, and the other element is not knowing if the lack of fish in an area is due to it being fished out, or we're simply spooking anything worthwhile. Now, um, you mentioned that you're worried about, um, you know, has the area been fished out or anything like that? Uh, fish do move a lot and it has quite a lot to do with water movement as well um, you know so if water is moving uh, for example there's a, there's a good current the tides affecting the current or if the moon's affecting the, the, the water movement um, then that can cause fish to uh, congregate but if the water isn't moving a lot for example there's not enough current fish can um, disperse and um, you know they can go deep and they can be um, you know not not you know all bunched up together so I do cover that a lot in the the series we talk a lot about current firstly I'd highly recommend uh, getting some type of underwater topography map now you need to get Navionics on your phone I think there's an Australia and a New Zealand uh, topo charts on there and don't forget they have a sonar chart option as well. You can click that and you can check out the sonar charts. Now some of them aren't accurate on the um, GPS as to where the spots are, but a lot of them are, particularly on the east coast, and um, that gives you the option to see the steep faces and things like that. Um, now once you've done that, I don't know if you have a boat or a sound or anything like that, uh, fish like to hang out with fish. So if you go over a spot with a nice steep drop or deep water nearby, and um, you know you're seeing uh, bait then that's a good sign that um, there may be other predatory fish in the area or something like that Now we're lucky with uh, underwater hunting that the majority of the species that we target are very um, good around divers. You know they're not um, all super spooky, uh, particularly um, fish that hang out, uh, predatory fish that hang out in the upper water column. So um, you know, just look for fish, look for bait, um, a little bit of action. Um, you know, even even large reefs that, that do drop off around the outsides, you know, if you work on top of those and just swim and, and look for a bit of fish action and then do a couple of dives um, around other fish and just see what happens. Now, what I'd highly recommend is getting in the mindset that spearfishing isn't about going out to an epic spot and, you know, uh, going and targeting fish. The, the right mindset, I believe, is um, you know 70 to 80 percent of your spearfishing is recon. So you're going out, you're looking, you're finding different types of terrain, um, you're seeing how the fish are acting in those areas. You, you're um, you know, and on different days when the when the water's doing different things, and you're watching how the water moves, and also how the moons are affecting the current, how the tides are affecting the current, and um, how that's sort of affecting the fish life there. Now. As I said, fish do move around a lot, so some days you'll have, it'll be epic, it'll be going off, and other days it just won't. So you've got to try, sort of try to find a bit of consistency there if you can. Now, obviously, I'd highly recommend going back to the series after your dive and watching those areas where I talk about um, location and um, on, of the, the different species and the current. And 
on the obviously on the series I actually show diagrams of where fish can be found so little highlighted areas and um, and then like you know your your, your um, rocky kind of coastal stuff the snapper and things like that as well um, because there's so much information in the series that I think a lot of guys sort of um, you know it just uh, a lot of it goes out the window so I'd highly recommend just keeping on going back and just um, you know relearning that that whole thing because it's all in there and um, that'll give you you know a really good idea as you build up just keep that mindset up that it's persistence and it's it's recon um, when you go out with that mindset of you're doing recon and you're collecting fish for the table along the way um, you know I think that can really help so yeah, I think I've sort of covered the basics of it, just a few, sort of scratched the surface on a few different topics that we do um, obviously cover in the How to Spearfish video series. So if you've got any more questions, dude, just fire them through. And if anyone else has questions, just, um, just PM us and um, I'll do my best to answer them. And you know, if you wanna check the series out, feel free to head over to Vimeo On Demand and um, type in How to Spearfish and the series will come up or follow the link in the description to this video and I hope you picked some info up. Cheers.